Hello YouTube! Again a computer day, because without this guy I cannot do nothing in my home recording studio. This is really a centerpiece of my setup. Uh, actually this is a really nice uh, workstation from the Hewlett Packard, is the HP Z840. But the time is arrived when I cannot work anymore with this guy, because I run it out uh, from the storage capacity. Every video what I shoot uh, to my YouTube channel, it costs around uh, 100 to 200 uh, gigabyte of uh, compressed uh, video data per video. So on the first time when I start to do a plan about this upgrade, I immediately get an email from the Hewlett Packard company uh, they came out with a new version, which is the Z8. And uh, unfortunately, the new Z8 workstation doesn't contain any kind of uh, uh, enterprise SAS uh, controller for the high drives. The problem here, if uh, let's say in two years I will switch from this Z840 workstation to the new Z8 workstation, then I cannot use the SAS drives. No, I have to do some kind of Frankenstein work here to make sure when I will switch to the Z8 workstation, I just can pull out all the hard drives with some kind of controller and I can install into the new Z8 workstation. And the other reason for this Frankenstein update even if this Z840 workstation is contained like an embedded controller with 8 SAS port, it still cannot do uh, really advanced RAID features like RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 50 and RAID 60. So what is my workflow at the moment? I take out the SD card from my camera, I place it here into this unbelievable fast card reader, then with the Sony Catalyst uh, Bros software, I immediately transcoded into XDCAM MPEG-2 format and then I stored all the raw video data into this RAID 0 SSD uh, RAID block here. So this one it's contain four piece of uh, Samsung uh, SSD, I can show it to you, is uh, Samsung Pro, I don't know what, uh, it's a, actually it's a not a big, this is only 128 uh, gigabyte, but I have from that four piece, and uh, with this four piece I made uh, a half uh, terabyte RAID 0 block, so this four guy in this configuration it's unbelievable fast, it's like uh, almost same fast like my main M2 SSD uh, Samsung Pro. After when I copied everything to these uh, RAID 0 guys, then I start to work on it with uh, Adobe Premiere, with, with other software, so whatever, whatever, and then when I finish with the video cutting, I do the export to my C drive, which is a really fast uh, Samsung uh, 960 M2 SSD. And then I copy all the files from this uh, RAID 0 guys to the mirrored uh, RAID uh, system here. Yeah, it's a kind of complicated, but on that way I can work really fastly on a files. I can do a lot of uh, things on my video editing software without any kind of uh, speed issue. And now unfortunately in the last uh, two weeks one of my drive is start to say hey it's enough, I cannot uh, work anymore, because uh, on the beginning I, I tried to save uh, some money with the configuration, so I didn't order the, the SAS drive, so I just used the normal desktop uh, two terabyte uh, SATA disk. Now I will do here a full SAS drive system with the additional SAS uh, RAID controller, and also on the same time I want to increase the capacity of my system. At the moment I ordered two piece of uh, Helium 12 uh, SAS beautiful 
enterprise level of uh, hard disk. At the moment I just want to install two pieces from this guy uh, on a mirror configuration. This is the advantage of the real enterprise level of RAID controller cards because with these cards what you can do a simple mirror on a beginning and then when you want to upgrade your system you can place other two HDD into the same system and you can reconfigure the existing RAID system. For example you can do from Z RAID 0 to RAID 1. You can do from Z uh, RAID 1 to RAID 5 or to RAID 6. What's the re real reason behind this? One of these drive it's cost 400 euro. As everybody I also have a budget for every month so at the moment I cannot buy four pieces from this guy only just two but on the next month I will buy other two. At the moment because I'm fully fully run out uh, from the storage capacity I think I left uh, one gigabyte or something like this uh, on these uh, drives and also my backup system, my NAS server, everything is full with video files and with pictures and with the musics and I don't know so I, I, I know at the moment I'm totally stuck. One of my friends he asked me why I'm not going uh, on a fully NAS uh, system and the answer is really simple. To work with the uh, full HD 10-bit uh, raw video files and uh, with a lot of music and everything you need a massive uh, bandwidth. I checked this uh, 10 gigabit network solution I have other server with uh, a dual uh, 10 gigabit uh, uh, fiber channel connector and I'm not so happy with the outcome. I think it's too complicated at the moment. Maybe my switcher is not really set up well for this 10 gigabit network or I don't know. So I don't feel safe if I have a, a computer, a really big NES system with 10 gigabit uh, connection and this system is connected together via some kind of uh, switcher or I don't know. So at the moment I not feel safe. So I just checked uh, all the uh, NAS solutions uh, which is uh, uh, capable to run on 10 gigabit networks and uh, the price also so high and I'm not fully understand the, the, the feature list and it's full with the marketing bullshit so I still wait with that uh, at the moment because also the 10 gigabit networks like a protocol is not fully clean at the moment so all oh, this is really nice but <laughs> time to do a real work no? Uh, what we not see here is the enterprise controller. So what you can do you can buy a completely new and new generation SAS RAID card for high price or you can buy a second hand RAID card for half high price or do something like what I did. Huh? <laughs> Let me bring here. <laughs> no, I think you get really confused. So what is this? This is a Dell PowerEdge T310 server. So at the moment on a eBay you can buy this really big beefy beautiful uh, servers for almost nothing. I got this one for free. For 150 euro you will get the card plus a lot of uh, SAS HDDs, CPU, motherboard, power source, whatever. This is unbelievable. First uh, let me show you guys uh, the back side. Yeah? A really decent case. I'm telling you guys this is not your desktop case. Yeah? This, is, this is something <laughs> <laughs> server level of case with dual redundant power solution and then if you have a look inside of course the CPU is a bit outdated and the RAMs are running only on 800 megahertz so this is what we will take out and uh, here is the battery backup system for the RAID controller and uh, tons of RAMs I don't know how many I think it's a uh, 12 or 24 uh, gigabyte of RAM with some kind of uh, Xeon 3000 I don't know series uh, CPU but here is our guy eh? Dell H700 RAID controller card 
with a mini SAS connector. Amazing cash system. Now we have the RAID controller. Eh? Don't forget, 150 euro. Eh? So I think in the future I will use this computer as a free NAS backup system because this one is still contain other six uh, normal uh, uh, SATA connector here. Ta da! Four piece of uh, SAS uh, one terabyte drive. And I know already one drive uh, from these four. It's, uh, it's not faulty, but it start to blink on a yellow, which is meaning it's possible fault. It's just telling you I will die soon. And in an enterprise level, the soon means uh, one or two years, eh? <laughs> something like this. So this first two is absolutely in a good condition. Oh guys, you have to feel this. This is uh, full metal, nothing plastic. Everything is aluminum and magnesium and uh, casted aluminum, as you can see here. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely right. This one contains uh, four piece of uh, SAS uh, drive from the Dell. And yeah, next one same. And if you're lucky, the serial numbers, they're not so differ. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Unbelievable what I find inside. Uh, somebody did here some kind of bodge uh, work. Eh? <laughs> Let me show you. Oh, look at this, what it was inside. Samsung uh, 850 Pro, uh, 256 gigabyte SSD. Eh? <laughs> so this video, what I'm showing now, is also true on your regular desktop PC. Don't worry about uh, my workstation. Here is my uh, four HDD bay and each one a two terabyte normal SATA something HDD, which is not enterprise HDD. You know what, uh, let me do some kind of uh, explanation about what is the big deal about SAS drives the SATA drives, let's call it consumer drives, they are inexpensive and you will get a, a large amount of capacity for less money. Meanwhile, the SAS drives, they give you much more faster transfer rate and they have much more higher MTBF. What is the MTBF? This is some kind of mystical number. Eh? This means the main time between failures, but uh, these failures, it can be only read error or write error or cache handling error or mechanical error. So it's, uh, it's not always meaning, let's say you have uh, one and a six million hour until your uh, HDD is dying. No, 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 no. For example, the consumer SATAS has about 700,000 hour and uh, the SAS Enterprise drives nowadays, they have two and a half million or three million hour between failures. The normal consumer grade SATA drives, when they came out with the MTBF numbers, they're kind of uh, marketing numbers. So in my life, in this uh, last 20 year, I realized something. Even this 700,000 hour of MTBF is not true. Unfortunately, if you kick into your computer, most of the case, your consumer grade HDD is immediately dying, which is absolutely not true on an enterprise level of HDDs. And those numbers are not uh, marketing numbers. So in an enterprise level, you cannot lie to your clients because uh, most of the time those HDDs they are storing business critical data. And uh, check the other number. The consumer grade uh, uh, SATA drives, uh, they measure this uh, MTBF uh, number on a normal room temperature, which is 25 degree. While the enterprise level of HDDs, they are measuring this uh, failure rate 
on a 45 degree. Eh? On the end, the SAS drives that are designed to run in harsh environments for a longer time with higher data speed. And you also can upgrade your line with more HDD connected to the same serial interface. And uh, why with the SATA, you just can use what you have. So if you have four port on your SATA controller, you just can use four uh, SATA disks. If you are dealing with media editing or with really heavy programming, or you have some kind of really uh, sophisticated enterprise level of work, this way, no way. This way is the way. So let's check what's the real numbers behind this really beautiful uh, Helium 12 HGST 12 terabyte Enterprise HDD. So the average MTBF number for this HDDs is about two and a half million hour. Eh? And uh, you will get with that five year limited warranty. If in the next five year, these drives will die, I will get a replacement. This HP workstation is have a really dark secret. This connector over there is a SAS connector, but the other end is not finishing with this uh, HFF8087 type of connector, which is this one. Yeah. For that I have to do some kind of bodge work, which is uh, one end is a HFF uh, mini SAS connector, and the other end it's a really unique connector because this is a male SATA connector. It's really hard to find. In your case, I think it will be much more easier because you can find the HFF mini SAS connector with the normal SATA cable end, which is the, the female. So you can attach directly from the mini SAS to your SAS drives without any kind of bodge work. But here what I have to do, I have to connect this one to the existing SATA cables because this is what uh, the HP is uh, used to connect to this really weird uh, SAS connector which is down there. Time to install the card. Okay, <laughs> look at this bodge work here, but looks to me uh, everything is working. Yeah, beautiful. This is the two new guy which is already installed into this uh, two bay. And uh, from my four old uh, HDD, two is sitting here and two is sitting there. And here we are. So I have to switch off the SAS controller completely. Ta-da! The Power Edge RAID controller card is working in my desktop workstation. Here we are. So, the, and this is what the big deal about the, the LSI controllers, because the motherboard the SAS RAID controller is also LSI, and this Dell PowerEdge uh, RAID controller is also LSI, so then the new card can import the, the RAID configuration from the old card without any kind of problem, and this is also true on a future. So I imported uh, the old uh, RAID 10 configuration. And the reason for that, of course, I want to move all of my old uh, data to the new system. So I downloaded uh, this HP service pack, which is the SP71545, uh, which is contained the LSI storage manager. Because unfortunately the Dell SAS storage manager don't want to work in the Windows 10 because the Windows is revoked the, the, the Dell certification for some kind of security reason and the Dell forgot to update the installer package with the new certification. So this is how it looks when you try to start this software. Yeah, <laughs> so this is what I get from the Dell. Thank you very much, Dell, to not update your uh, softwares with the new certification. RAID 1. So now we have here a new RAID array, which is configured on Mirror. Huh? 
he tried to fix this error in this old uh, piece of garbage. So it will take a bit of time. And on parallelly, this uh, enterprise rate controller is start to build up the new uh, mirrored uh, 12 terabyte uh, space. Now I think I have to left uh, here this puppy for half a day. <laughs> Okay, now it's uh, Sunday morning 8 o'clock and all of my files are copied uh, from the old uh, RAID 10 array to the new uh, mirrored uh, 12 terabyte uh, hard disks. I have to remove all this uh, old consumer grade HDDs to make sure I will not get here any kind of uh, medium error or something. This is the two one terabyte SAS drive from this uh, Dell uh, PowerEd server. They're actually really nice uh, hard drives. So now what we have to do is to clear uh, the foraging configuration from these uh, one terabyte drives and then we can use as a unconfigured uh, drives. What I will configure to RAID uh, 1, I think, because at the moment it is much more important for me uh, to be safety. RAID level 1, so it's mirrored, one piece and full capacity. Yeah, I'm happy. Pack. Here uh, you see there is uh, some advanced uh, software options which is at the moment is disabled. And I have to figure out how I can enable this uh, Cascade. Um, I cannot use this uh, really advanced uh, Cascade solution because my RAID controller is not fit into the hardware list. But uh, look at this. Um, this is the newer version of the exactly same hardware what is uh, on this card by the LSI. So what we can do is to refresh the RAID controller card and get the 9260 firmware. So it's a bit tricky. I think I will do a separate video on this issue because now at the moment my uh, controller is uh, looks like a normal 2108 uh, RAID controller. This will be a really nice project, eh? I think uh, we are done at the moment, yeah? So now I will copy this 5 terabyte data to here and now I can uh, upload this video, <laughs> what I just written now. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching, see you next time, bye. Beautiful, beautiful, oh, a lot of storage. Thank you, Dell. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, HP. And thank you, LSI. And thank you, AGST, huh? with this amazing helium technology. <laughs>